Hi everyone and welcome back to Off the Cuff with me, your host, Kaylin. So today is all about trying to conceive, also known as TTC. Now I am not an expert and this is for anyone trying, whether you're doing it the traditional way of intercourse or if you have a pelvic floor condition and you're using syringe method, the good thing is, is that ovulation works the same way for everybody. So before we get started, I just want to put real statistics out there because TTC and trying to have a family can get very emotional very quickly. And sometimes knowing the statistics can ease some of your anxieties that come on even very early on when trying. So it can take up to 12 months for healthy couples to conceive. We only have about a 20% chance each month of successful conception. 20% is not a high number. Fertility begins to decline in 30s, especially after age 35 for females. By age 40, chances are less than 5%. Fertility issues among young couples within their 20s, is what I'm referring to, is mostly on the man's side. So it is very important that if you are having difficulties, it takes you to tango. It's best that both of you get checked out and just make sure that everything is normal and healthy and functioning the way it should. Okay, so let's get started. So the main thing that you should start with is begin tracking your menstrual cycle. Now, I'm someone who has always tracked it just because I never wanted to be surprised when my period did come up and I was able to track, you know, what my average cycle length was and you learn more things as you track it. So the average uh, is 28 days is uh, the average cycle, but some are shorter and some are longer. 21 to 40 days are considered normal within the normal ranges and everybody's a little bit different. For me, I have a 30 day cycle. So on a normal 28 day cycle, most will ovulate on day 14. Now, because I have two extra days than everybody else, or people who have a 28 day cycle, I mostly ovulate on day 16 of my cycle. So what is ovulation? Now I'm only going over this because I don't know the level of knowledge of people who are watching this video and I wanna be able to touch base whether you're an expert or don't know anything at all. So ovulation is a release of a mature egg and hopes to be fertilized within 12 to 24 hours. It's a very, very tight window. The egg is released by a hormone called luteinizing hormone which is the hormone that the ovulation predictor kits look for when you are tracking. You have five optimal days for intercourse in hopes of conception, which is the five days leading up to and the day of ovulation. Now, what I want to make clear is that you want to be having intercourse before ovulation happens. The goal is, is that you want sperm inside your fallopian tubes waiting for when your egg finally comes out, they are ready to fertilize. And so the goal is that since sperm can live inside the female body for up to five days, given the perfect environment, it doesn't mean that it will survive for five days, it is to have them waiting for the egg when you ovulate. And many of the times people wait until they ovulate and then it's too late. You've already missed that window. So ways of knowing ovulation is approaching or occurring. So if you're not using ovulation predictor kits, your cervical mucus is a good way to understand what's going on with your body. So what ovulation cervical mucus looks like is egg white consistency. It's stretchy, it's elastic. This is very sperm friendly cervical mucus and they actually provide nutrients to sperm when they are on their way to your fallopian tubes in hopes to find that precious egg. Now, some people report not having this kind of cervical mucus. I do. I'm someone that always knew when I was ovulating. So if you don't have this, it's great to use ovulation predictor kits, also known as OPKs. So for your OPKs, I ordered the Easy at Home 
from Amazon. It came with 50 LH tests, which is the luteinizing hormone, your ovulation kit, and 20 HCG tests, which is the pregnancy test. So for understanding ovulation predictor kits, and I've only used this one, so the easy at home, so I don't know if the rules are different, but to get a positive result, your line needs to be as dark or darker than the control line. So I'm gonna show you my results for July, but before I show you, I wanna go over what it is or what my results were. So the month I successfully conceived, I peaked on July 25th. My ovulation predicted through my apps was July 26th. I had intercourse on July 24th, so the day before I peaked, and the day of ovulation. So I'm gonna flip this around the best I can, and I want you guys to see my results. As you can see, I peaked, like I said, on July 25th, which is a good indicator that I would be ovulating on the 26th. You don't peak on the day of ovulation, you peak 24 hours before you ovulate. And I hope you guys can see the days there, but I went over it just in case it wasn't clear. I really didn't have a better way of doing this. <laughs> so I apologize. So those are my results, so again, my ovulation was predicted on July 26th. I peaked on July 25th. I had intercourse on July 24th and on July 26th. I'm not sure what day took, but I'm guessing that July 24th was when I conceived successfully. So I had intercourse 24 hours before I peaked with the LH hormone, which indicated that ovulation was going to happen. Excuse me. So, if a sperm has met your egg, the work is not done. The now fertilized egg must now successfully latch and bury itself into the uterine lining. Once this happens, HCG will start to secrete and within the next couple days, you should get a positive pregnancy test. Now, I wanna talk about lube. Uh, obviously, naturally, they say the best is to not use any at all, but for people like me, that is just not possible. So I tried two lubricants. One I didn't like, one I loved, and I think actually helped me get pregnant. So the first one that I use, that a lot of people know, is Baby Dance. And it came with, you know, the applicator, and it came with, I think, four or six of these little lubricants. This burned me. This was not comfortable. It had a scent to it. But Baby Dance and uh, Pre-Seed are like the two that are most talked about. I didn't want to try Pre-Seed because I didn't like some of the ingredients. It was just a personal preference of mine. I did not like it. Now, this is one... This is a lubricant that I loved that I've never heard of before. And I'm someone that I prefer natural stuff. I understand that chemicals a lot of times are part of lubricants. Um, but I came across this, Biogenesis by Good Clean Love. I can't rave enough about it. And I'm surprised that the TTC community doesn't know more about this. It is fertility friendly so you only want to use it when you're ovulating and I say this because when you're ovulating your pH goes up it elevates to a seven typically at any other part in your cycle your vaginal pH is between 3.5 and 4.5 but when you ovulate it elevates to a seven and the reason it does this is because semen is also a seven so everything is compatible and you wanna find a lubricant that keeps that compatibility going. So this, that's why they say fertility friendly because it's trying to keep you in that balance of a seven. It says biomatch to support sperm viability and healthy vaginal flora. It's paraben free. It was amazing. It, it enhanced 
intercourse, but I knew that it was also helping us. And I, I cannot say enough great things about the lubricant. Um, so if you are trying, I recommend Biogenesis, Go Clean Love. I got it at Target. Um, I don't remember how much it was, but it was awesome. Uh, so that's pretty much all I wanted to go into. Um, I guess one thing I will mention is making sure that your vaginal health is up to par when you are trying to conceive. It is very easy for semen to throw things off and our balance in there is very gentle and it's not very hard to throw it off. So when I was trying to conceive, we started in May. Um, I didn't know because I was completely asymptomatic. I had bacterial vaginosis and my only indicator was that I was spotting a little bit. And I went to go see my OBGYN. I tested positive. She didn't give me option for treatment. So I went and got a second opinion and I did get treatment in June. And then I successfully conceived in July. So for the month of April and May and June, I do think that having this silent infection was impeding on being able to conceive successfully. So even if you think things are great, it never hurts to go get swabbed, make sure that your vaginal health is up to par and is ready to help you with conception. I hope to, that today was insightful. I tried to give, uh, I, I'm not an expert, but I try to give, you know, accurate statistics and facts. And I really hope that maybe something that I told you today was insightful and could help you on your way. Uh, trying to conceive is not as easy as people make it seem. And yeah, and if anything, if I helped in any way, please let me know. I would love to know that I was able to help somebody. So hang in there. Your time will come. Knowledge is power. The more you know, it will help. So I will see you guys next time.